I was asked on the some of the comments of one of the other videos to kind of explain the difference of the types of resistors and types of capacitors in a two guitar amplifier and in amplifiers in general, what they're for uh, and what the kind of different uses are and what the different styles are. So to start off with, uh, I just thought I'd start with the kind of the basics first, which is there's kind of three main types of resistors that we will use often in amps. And they're kind of often colored in a way that makes sense as well to help you tell the difference. These are those three here. Um, so you've got, um, let me try and put them back, I think in about here where they'll be in focus. So we have the light tan, the dark brown, and then blue. There's some other colors I've seen in general, but these are the three that generally be used most of the time that you'll see. And there's one other type that uh, is like this type, which is a, these are like military grade Vache Dale type um, resistors that are more, they're called RN65. Those are just higher quality, but they generally are also carbon film, as I understand. And I'll tell you what those are in a second as well, but that's another type you'll see sometimes right? like this. So the three, according to their noise, go this way. First is the blue ones, which are called metal film. They have the lowest noise uh, and therefore are preferred, especially for like hi-fi audio, uh, because they don't introduce any noise. Um, and uh, by the way, a good article about this is by the the Valve Wizard. He has a very very great detail in his book about um, the components in amps. Look, I got some gunk on there that um, explain what those different reasons of why the noise is there. But just a summary of that, basically, that's the metal film. The next up is what's called carbon film. Carbon film have a little bit more noise, but it's very close to this one. And for guitar amps, at least the theory is that a lot of people say, and I don't know if there's any good proof of this, but they tend to add also a little bit of character. These can tend to be somewhat sterile, supposedly, whereas these are a little bit warmer. I, I don't know if that's true. Maybe some of the noise they add is actually beneficial for guitar amps. I'm doing a lot of these with the metal film just due to that theory, but I don't know for sure myself personally. I would have to have a lot more years experience of playing with different ones, but I have done quite a few that have the blue style that aren't. Um, and then third one is this, what's called carbon composite, which is literally just carbon packed together because par carbon is somewhat conductive and they know if they have enough of it packed in, in a row in the right way, it, it has a specific resistance level. Uh, and then, as I said, these ones are, are more like car the same as these carbon film, but are just a little higher quality resistor. So you'll see me building with some of those as well. Um, so those are generally used in the signal chain. These are all sized roughly the same because they're, although this one isn't, the other ones are all uh, half watt. This one I think is actually one or two watt. Um, but um, the uh, this is another one that's like a new old stock style that's also a carbon film, but it's just a little bit different looking one. And that one also has that kind of brownish color. It's just a little bit darker brown, but it's still carbon film instead of carbon composite or metal film. There are another class of resistors, which I will slide these out. These are what are called ceramic resistors, and they're used in power um, level stuff where they're much higher wattage. So uh, the kind of the smallest one here is this one, and this runs at, I believe, yeah, this is a five water by Ohmite. And Ohmite's a very nice brand, high quality. So this is a, a 390 ohm one. Here's a 400 ohm one. This is by uh, Ohmite as well. It's one of their older stuff. This is kind of new old stock stuff I got at a local shop that has a lot of it. Similarly here, this is a brand, I think it's called Milwaukee, if I remember right. It's one same here as well. This is a 450, also five ohm. This one's a larger, this is a, I think a 20 ohm, uh, 10K. This is a more common style you'll see now, Zycon 10 watt, 130 ohm. This is a, a, a very standard ceramic style, uh, cement ceramic resistor. And the way these all work is they just literally wind wire in a coil around something and then connect leads to either end of that. And that coil is they know for a certain gauge of wire in a distance length, whatever that is, a mile, a quarter mile, you know, something equals X resistance. And so they can wind an exact number of windings around to equal that distance and create that resistor. Uh, and that's why they're called wire round, wound. Uh, so the, and those are just use, usually used for the power resistors, anything that's going to take high current, high heat, so they can resist that level of, uh, of current without melting. All right, so that's all of the main resistors that I have used in any common amps. Let's move on to capacitors. The common capacitors, one of the most important ones you start off with are what these called these electrolytic capacitors. This is a particular brand called F&T. They came in the, in the, in the Fender Bassman that I had. I've used these, I've used JJ, I've used Illinois, I've used uh, the um, Sprague Adams. Um, Sprague Adams are nice, but they are a little pricey for the quality, whereas you can get these same ones here that will be the same quality, but a lot cheaper F&T or JJ or some of those brands. But electrolytics job is having really high capacitance ratings. Once you get to a certain point of capacitance, it gets pretty expensive to make other types of capacitors we'll talk about in a minute. So they tend to be cheaper to do them in electrolytics. The only disadvantage to them is electrolytics wear out over time. The electrolytic is a liquid in them that will dry up. You'll sometimes see them all crusty and bubbling up at the top because that's the electrolytic kind of boiling off as it's like dead and dying. Um, so 
those do need to be changed on a regular basis. And by regular for amps, it's like between 10 to 15 years, depending on the usage and what type. Like if they're used really regularly, they actually, I think, last longer because the electrolytic is regularly warmed and kept used. Whereas if they sit, they kind of tend to dry out and can kind of crust up and die. So the more they're used, actually, the better they generally last, will last, but they still have a maximum number of hours before they're considered failed by the, and you'll see them on the data sheet of each particular one. The next kind you'll see are different kinds of like uh, plastic type ones. There's polyester, there's polypropylene. Uh, and so these are some different ones here. There, this is a, what's called a 715P style. Um, this one here, I think might be the 6P, I don't remember, but you can't see it because it's worn off. But this is a sprig that came in the fender that somebody put in it. This was one of the original fenders. I don't know the particular brand of these guys, but this is another type of those. Uh, and then there's a different style as well. You'll see this is also, I think these are kind of a polypropylene, but they're wound around a circular shape instead of being in the big you know, button shape ones. Those are used for uh, tone shaping uh, and decoupling. So your coupling capacitors will be this or your tone stack capacitors will often be this kind, unless you need to get to very small values and then you switch to the other two kinds. Now, oh, before I switch to the other two kinds, the other thing about these is tonally, there's huge debate that always goes on. I can't tell you for sure which are the best. You would have to really play with them yourself and decide which one you liked the best. I have seen decent success in amps myself with the cheapest Zycon Brown that look like kind of brown uh, chiclet type gum or whatever. They're very inexpensive and I think they work great, but I've also been trying out some of these nicer, more expensive ones. I think there is a cash to return ratio. If you spend too much on these, it doesn't really gain you a lot, but probably just the general quality and reduced noise and reduced uh, like what's called ESR, effective series resistance. That's kind of a, more of a problem with these guys. Uh, is that that gives you the more money you spend generally increases the quality and, and better performance of those things But that is another one of those debates for the ages that I can't answer and that's I think something you have to personally figure out for yourself Similarly uh, the smaller types are there's two major kinds although there's a third I'm not mentioning here, which we'll cover in a second. These are called um, Ceramic capacitors and these are mica capacitors and there may be some other kinds I'm not thinking of but there these are tend to be supposedly a lot cleaner sounding but some of these ones especially the z5f style can actually be just as good performing as these or very close. But um, they've been used for years. These tend to be a lot cheaper than mica. Some people say mica tend to also be a bit too sterile, too clean, whereas these add a little bit of color. I, I don't know for sure myself, but that's just the kind of the common knowledge or discussion people talk about a lot with these. So there's no easy way to answer that. You'll have to do the experiment yourself as well to figure out what you think personally and do what you think is right with that. But there's another one I'm not mentioning called tantalum capacitors. If you've been watching my my build that I'm doing for the um, Dumble, there are several used in that one as well. And it's a different type of material. I think they tend to be a little bit more expensive and higher quality in general, but they're just not used as much because of cost. Now, one final note is recently, and I'm going to train this in another build, is these style of electrolytics, because they're high, 100 microfarad or 40 microfarad, these cost between maybe $5 and $10 per. There's a new style I've seen in very large type capacitors that are metal film like these. Or, or film tile type anyway, but they can get upwards of 40 or 60 microfarads, but they cost almost double, you know, like 10 to 12 or $14 instead of five to 10. I'm gonna possibly try that in a future build, but at any rate, and those, the good thing about those again is they don't, these don't age, they don't die. They will last indefinitely pretty much unless they're over, you know, overloaded by some form or, you know, caused harm to them. And then they will of course fail, but just by normal use within specs, they should last almost indefinitely. So, I hope that kind of covers some of the general questions I've gotten on the forums and by people about what are the different types of capacitors and resistors we use in amps and why. Uh, that's not a deep dive. There's some really good videos out there on the inter internet, on YouTube and whatnot to kind of talk in more depth about why and how. But I wanted that to just be a quick video on tech tips, uh, on my tech, tech tips series to help people understand what really are just the basic quick and dirty reasons why you might choose one over the other of these. Please give me some comments. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me if I'm crazy. I appreciate any kind of feedback you want to give, but also I hopefully this is helpful for some of you guys out there that are trying to learn how this works. So uh, I also appreciate like, thumbs up, subscriptions, click that alarm bell if you once you subscribe because you'll get all the notifications. And finally, I, I've mentioned this before just recently, but I did add a bunch of links now should be in the bottom of all of my videos for different kinds of equipment you've seen me using. Uh, things like my helping hands, uh, that are attached to my Panavice that helps me doing my soldering uh, on the circuit boards themselves, my uh, my multimeter, my uh, power supply, my, you know, almost everything I can think of that I, th I use on a very regular basis is there for you guys to look at. If you click on those links that I put, those are affiliate links, so that'll help my channel a little bit. You don't have to, you know, by all means, but hey, if you've got the, the extra time and you're buying that anyway, please do me that favor, so. 
I really appreciate everything that you guys do on the comments. It's been, uh, I've been seeing that grow and that's been really fun seeing people ask a lot of questions and bring suggestions as well. So please continue to do that as well. And uh, thanks everybody. Have a great one.